let's go to Elu. No. Hello, everybody, and welcome. As you just saw in the intro, I want to try to go to Elu, and I want to deliver this rover there. What is Elu, you might ask? Well, it's the planet furthest away from the sun in the game Kerbal Space Program 2 that you are seeing here. And since I've basically been everywhere else, I think, uh, I thought why not go there and visit the most remote place in the solar system. And I try to uh, make this journey a little bit more interesting for all of you. Instead of just going through the usual beats, we're going to count something. And we're going to count the bugs that I encountered during this mission. Because as all of you probably know, Kerbal Space Program 2 is still in early access and therefore still a little bit wonky in places. Well, a lot of places. Anyway. If you're interested in how the development of that game is going to pan out and maybe in my interview I'm going to do with creative director Nate Simpson next week at the Space Creator Day in Germany, you should stay subscribed to this channel. Here we're testing the lander module that I built on top of the rover and it seems to work pretty well. There is actually enough thrust to lift it up here on Kerbin, our home planet. But yeah, I could maybe reduce the thrust because Elo has a lot less gravity, but I really don't mind. Nobody complained about too much power in rockets, did they? All right, but to get there, we need a lot of fuel reserves, or at least a lot of efficiency and fuel reserves. That's why I'm going the hydrogen route, and I've just attached this huge ball of hydrogen tank on top and some additional rockets, uh, rocket nozzles around it. Let's see how that pans out, shall we? First, of course, we need to uh, attach some more uh, stuff to it to actually create a launch vehicle that gets us out of the atmosphere, therefore I'm going to build it fairing and so on and let's give it all a nice little paint job and then let's try it out how it works the thing is it kind of worked <laughs> until it didn't because as you can see here even though i used a copious amount of struts things were still falling in and out of that fairing for some reason Well, there is a reason for that, and I'm going to show it to you later when I finally found out why all of this disintegrated here. And that also explained why it wobbled that much on top and not below. But yeah, well, you have to wait for the conclusion of that. Again! Yes, because now I just tried something else, and it's... <laughs> you could call it the pendulum rocket fallacy. Because for some reason in Kerbal Space Program, the first one as well as this one, if you pull a weird payload, it sometimes works a lot easier than by pushing it from below, because there is less wobble when you pull something than when you push it. But in this case, that didn't work out either. As you can see here in gory detail, but you also know what that means. Again. Yes, I tried it again, and here I messed up the staging, but it wouldn't have worked anyway. Again. Yeah, but when I tried to revert to launch, this happened. We loaded the entire KSC landscape and not the vehicle. It's there on the launch pad, but I have to switch to it manually. And then it's still broken, so yeah. After I launch it, of course, well, it is already broken, but <laughs> part of it still works. Again. Okay, then I tried just the transfer stage, and it turned out that the radial attachment doesn't work. Or at least in this case didn't work. So the way I attached these tanks onto this spherical tank caused some weird issues. So what I did, I was using this attachment point thingamajig, then I attached the tanks and suddenly it was rock solid. Hmm. 
Well, good to know for next time, but it's something that really shouldn't exist in the first place. I mean, yeah, so that's why I call it bug number two in this video. Uh, I discovered quite a lot more. Well, yeah, this year all of you who have played Cobra Space for Uber 2, you know this. This is the usual rocket wobble. <laughs> looks like a snake kind of wiggling itself into orbit instead of a rocket just flying. But in the end we managed to get out of the atmosphere sometime later and once we were in the second stage things immediately calmed down. And then yeah the fairing deployment it's kind of weird. The fairing <laughs> after a certain point of uh, moving away from the vehicle it just drops down to the surface. I don't know. I don't think it's really a bug, more like uh, they haven't finished developing it yet, but it looks bad. So, what I did here is I tried to, well, not really get an efficient encounter, but because I thought, well, I have more than 9000 meters per second of delta V in this vehicle, surely those are enough reserves to do some maneuvers along the way, so I just went outside of uh, Kerbin's sphere of influence. What I tried to do was um, to then later make another maneuver node to um, or perform another maneuver to get to the planet out there. You can see it on the right hand side and I'm focusing to it and now the map view is wonky or SQ because ELU has um, a bit of an inclination compared to the sun. And apparently the game then switches the entire view to fit to that inclination, which is a bit annoying. So yeah, I called it a bug. And another thing is, for some reason, a lot of times when I was doing this mission, the game kind of went into pause mode when it shouldn't, when I was on high time warp and then I hit uh, don't time warp again and then it went into pause and here it went right beyond my target because I was not able to see that there are actually two orbital lines because both are in the same blue tone. That's annoying. This is also annoying. <laughs> I try. I of course had some quick load, uh, a quick save available when I loaded it. The craft was not really visible and everything was super slow and hot. the game kind of halted to a crawl which was not nice but fortunately i managed to save that or recover from that by loading another save game then reload the quick save game and then it worked so we are finally here in the sphere of influence of Wilu, the furthest away from the sun and then I was not able to perform any maneuver because I didn't have enough fuel. Yes, I know the developers say that this is kind of intentional to take into account something that will come later with Interstellar Terminal. Again! But anyway, I had to do it again either way because yeah, I didn't have enough fuel reserve. So even if I could have performed the maneuver, well planned the maneuver i would not have been able to perform it because no fuel reserve so yeah copious amounts of save games will rescue your missions this was also true for the first couple corporate space program so i can't hold that against ksp2 all right and we're back at our usual uh, sideways glance at ELU and we already have our encounter after a much more efficient transfer to ELU that saved us about well, 5,000 or 3,500 meters per second of delta V so yeah. And now of course we have to do our maneuver to get into a stable orbit here. And actually, it's always nice to look at those engine plumes in space. They, they really did a good job with that, I think. Yeah, I know there is uh, a lot of... There's like the waterfall mod for KSP-1 and real plumes and whatever. But yeah, this is also nice. And this is stock. And this is where I almost crashed into the surface because performing that maneuver really brought me close to the icy plains of Ilu. But in the end, I managed to uh, get here just fine. And then we can release the rover finally. Well, not completely, because we're still attached to the lander. 
But here we are and I'm going to reduce my orbit to get into a better place to get down to the surface. Not on the shadow side because, yeah, you wouldn't see anything. And you won't see anything in just a few moments, or at least not much from the rover, because for some reason there appeared to be an invisible ball or something that destroyed my rover. Hmm. Ah, well, as I said, quick save often, or save often, because I don't think you can do multiple quick saves in KSP2. Um, or maybe it does it automatically and you can't do it manually. Anyway, you can do manual save games as many as you like. And in the end, we are now going to land our little rover over here. But while I was descending, I noticed something. You just saw the, the thing kind of uh, wiggle around when some time warp thing changed. Or something changed. Anyway, uh, the rover and the lander are now coming now completely disfigured for some reason. Look at that tail end. That looks awful. It was still functional, so I managed to touch down safely and blink and you miss it. Did you see that? The ground moves or maybe the vehicle moves for some reason without any user input? Hmm, curious. What's also curious, because of that vehicular disfigurement I mentioned earlier, uh, even after separating the lander portion of the rover, uh, yeah, it still stayed attached because those parts are now intertwined for reasons. I mean, the rover is powerful enough to... <laughs> drag this thing along if necessary but in the end i decided to get rid of it and therefore switch to map view right clicked on hopefully the correct vehicle and then select to destroy it i hope that's the correct one yes it was and now we still have our rover here with its broken tail end i mean look at that that looks hideous I really hope they figure that out sometime in the future. Another annoying thing in Kerbal Space Program 2 that I've been uh, complaining about ever since the game has released is how rovers move. And there is no separate wheel throttle and wheel steering uh, key binding that you can do. If you have the reaction wheels enabled, if you pl press the WASD keys for directions, it will also cause some input for the torque and the rover will wiggle around and not just steer or uh, hit the gas or the brakes or anything. So I really hope they, they uh, provide some separate rover control soon. And this is a funny one. Look at the Kerbal. Hmm. Are there winds on ELU that blow away the curve like that or maybe this is just another example of the ground moves bug that i mentioned earlier when in reality it's the vehicle or kerbal or whatever that's moving when it's at a certain height above the surface it's a really weird thing but as you've seen it was very reproducible and as always at the end of a mission we plant a flag to commemorate the occasion and then we are annoyed because once again our flag displays the default flag and not our agency flag. Yeah, I think that's also one of the bugs that I reported back in March. Something like that. That's, that's, that, that one is in since KSP2 has been released, at least in early access. Anyway, what's your experience with going to Elio? Have you been there? Do you plan to go there? Let me know in the comments below or hop over on my Discord server so we can have a chat over there. Or come to Speyer and visit us as the Technik Museum there. I think there are still some tickets left on sale, so be quick and get them and we can meet in person. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.